It doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> we're Gavin and Emily, and we're converting a 2010 international school bus into our own tiny home on wheels. This week, we started plumbing. Come along as we get our bus one step closer to being a home. So underneath all of this mess right now is our water tank. You guys saw us unbox our water tank a couple weeks ago. This is the 100 gallon water tank from Rec Pro, and it comes with four ports on the one end. This is gonna be a little bit hard to see because it's so close to the side of the bus, but I'm gonna do my best to explain what we're using each port for. Since our water tank is going to weigh close to a thousand pounds when it is full, we're going to build a frame-ish around it with two by fours so that it is held in place. We don't want it shifting at all when we're driving. But before I build that frame, I'm actually going to attach the fittings to this side of the tank that we need to attach because it's gonna be hard to get to since it's so close to the wall. So I'm gonna do that first so I can move the tank around as much as I need to to attach them and then I will frame the tank in place. I'm gonna start with our air vent. This is a half inch to a barbed fitting so that our hose, our air vent hose can just slide onto this barbed fitting. I applied some Teflon tape and now I'm just going to screw it into this port on the water tank. All right, we've got all four fittings connected. This will be our gravity fill our outlet for our water that will go to our pump, our outlet for draining, and then our air vent. Our plan is to box in this side of the water tank with a piece of plywood across the top of it, and then this piece as a kind of wall, and then we'll have our pump and our accumulator on this surface here, and then we're gonna mount our filter system on this surface here. So I've just cut out this side of the box and I'm just going to screw it in to our bed framing and to our floor and then I will cut out this top of this box. So I'm working on framing in the other end of the water tank now. This area is going to be under our bed still, but we're going to, we plan on having like a little door from the end of our bed that goes down into this area that we'll use as laundry storage. So I'm kind of just boxing it in. And then when we put our bed frame on, we will build that little door and hopefully be able to access this area. Um, this is what I have so far. There is a piece all the way along the back. And then I just cut another, custom fit piece hopefully it fits beautiful so here is a general idea of what it will look like so this area is boxed in for our water plumbing fixtures this area will be where our laundry storage is under our bed and then here we're going to be installing a large drawer that pulls out into our alleyway. Okay, so I think I have the majority of our fixtures planned out. I know where everything's gonna go. It all seems to fit, so I figured that out before I screwed anything in just in case. I'm going to take this bottom piece of wood back outside and paint it with some mold and mildew primer and then we're just gonna do a white coat of paint over everything just so it's nice and clean and protected from any moisture. Um, and then I'll bring everything back in, screw it all in permanently, and then we can start screwing in our plumbing fixtures. While I wait for my paint to dry, I'm going to drill the hole for our water inlet um, grommet fitting. This hole is on the top of our tank, so it's very likely when I drill this hole, this little circular piece of plastic is going to fall into our tank. So I also have my shop back here so I can fish out any plastic that falls into the tank. But yeah, the tank fittings came with these instructions that tell me exactly what size hole saw to use. I'm using a one and a quarter inch hole saw for this fitting that will fit a half inch PVC pipe. And I'm just gonna drill a hole. All 
I'm gonna run my shot back while I do it to try and catch any of the plastic that's coming off. Look at that, the hole didn't fall in. So here is the hole I just drilled in the tank. This grommet is going to fit directly into that hole. The instructions say just to put a thin layer of dish soap around this piece that fits in and then it should slide right in. As you can see, my little plumbing appliance box that I have built around the water tank is nice and dry and all painted. We are getting ready to install our water inlet that is going to be on the outside of our bus. If you saw last week's video, it's going to be right next to basically where the water heater door is. And so this door will be on the outside of the bus. It opens up and it has our gravity fill inlet, our hose hookup, and then it also has a vent here at the bottom that our air vent will hook up into. So we're going to do the same that we did last week, cutting the hole for the water heater. We're gonna cut that out with the angle grinder from the outside, cut through the middle first, and then drill the hole right here so that this inlet is right where our plumbing um, fixtures are going to be. This fitting I have seen in other people's videos is pretty difficult to connect to once this water inlet is actually installed in the side of the bus. So I'm going to attach our um, female shark bite fitting to this now so that we don't have to do it when it's in the side of the bus and a lot harder to get to. Um, so as you can see it just is a half inch threaded metal fitting. I got this again half inch female to push to connect fitting it's a shark bite fitting like most of the other fittings we are using so i'm just going to put some teflon tape around these threads and tighten this guy on now so that once this is installed all we have to do is push our pex pipe into this fitting and we don't have to worry about tightening it or making that connection in a hard to reach spot Fit number two. It's in. Yeah! Alright, I put some Rust Oleum around the edge where we cut the metal, and Gavin just pre drilled these holes. So I'm going to put beetle tape around the edges, and then we're ready to screw in our inlet. cold driller. <laughs> Here is the water inlet from the inside. As you can see it sits pretty far in to our wall so once we hook up the hose and pipes that are going to hook up to this we will fill in these gaps with some great stuff so it's nice and insulated but it fits nice and snug and now I get to hook up the plumbing. This is the hose we are using for our gravity fill line. It is a one and three eighths inner diameter hose. This fitting is actually a one and a quarter inch fitting supposedly. However, we ordered a one and a quarter inch hose and it did not fit over this. So we moved up to the one and three eighth inch and it fits on a little bit loosely, but we're going to tighten this hose clamp onto it nice and snug and monitor for leaking and hopefully it should be fine because this is our only option right now. So I will link this hose below. Um, and then at this end where it goes into the tank, same thing. We've got a hose clamp clamped around the entrance to the tank. 
Next up, we've got our air vent. So I've got this clear tube and it's going to connect here to this barb fitting at the top of our tank. And then the other end will connect to this vent hole. And I've just got two hose clamps on it, one for each end. So we are using shark bite fittings for the majority of our plumbing. Shark bite use a push to connect fitting, meaning all you have to do is push your pecs into the fitting and you have a secure connection. There's a two stop um, mechanism. So when you first push, you'll meet a little resistance and then you just have to push until you get to the second stop. And then you've got your connection and it's super secure. Um, they are super easy. They're a little bit more expensive than other fittings, but since we're doing it on such a small scale, um, we thought the price was worth the ease of use. All right, now that our water inlet is set up, we are ready to mount our water filter. So the filter system we decided to go with is this one. This is the Clear Source Onboard Ultra water filtration system. Clear Source makes a bunch of different RV filtration systems. This one is made to be permanently mounted on the inside of your RV, um, which is what we decided to do so that we can just mount it under the bed in our plumbing area and leave it and not have to worry about it ever again. So the Clear Source onboard filter has a three-stage filtration system. The filters sit in these blue cartridges. The first filter is a five micron filter. It removes any rust and sediment from the water. The second filter is the 0.5 micron carbon filter and it helps remove chlorine. It helps improve the taste and smell of your water and just remove any other contaminants that the first one misses. And then lastly, there is the virus guard filter and this filter is there to remove any bacteria like E. coli or Giardia from your water. So we decided that we want to install this filter before the water even gets into our water tank so that all of our water is clean and filtered and our water tank doesn't have any gross stuff ever going into it. Um, that way, when we take a shower or use our sink um, or use water anywhere else in the bus, we know that it's all clean and filtered. The clear source filters are made to be switched out every couple of months. It depends how often you're using it. Since we plan to be traveling full time, we'll probably change out our filters once every three or four months. If you're not traveling as much, you don't need to change them out as much, obviously. Um, but yeah, where I'm just gonna mount this on the wall behind me and hook it up to our water system. To go from our filter to our tank, we are going from PEX to PVC. So I got this one and a half inch, or sorry, half inch to half inch PEX to PVC fitting, and we're going to cut a length of PVC that's long enough to go from this fitting and into the tank. Here is our filter mounted. The clear source filters come with half inch PEX fittings on either side. So we just have a piece of PEX and then an elbow going to our water inlet. And then same on this side. We have a piece of half-inch pecs connected to their fitting and then down into our tank. So water will come in through the inlet, be pushed through our filter, and then go straight into our water tank. The next step in our plumbing system is our pump and accumulator. So we just ran our pecs from our water outlet at the bottom of our tank, put some elbows in it, and came up here to where we're connecting to our pump. So water will flow through our pump. This is a self-priming pump and it comes with this little strainer attached. Hopefully there won't be too much to strain out since what everything will be going through our filter system first. And then straight from the pump, we go into our accumulator. So that will just be connected here with this little piece of PEX and some pinch clamps. After our accumulator, our water will, water will flow towards our water heater. We're going to install a check valve in between our accumulator and our water heater. So the check valve just allows water to only flow in one direction. This just means water won't be able to flow backwards into our pump and into our tank.
Next, we are going into our water heater. So after our accumulator, we've got our cold water that comes into this tea, and then this tea will go cold water into the cold inlet of the water heater and our hot water will come out and then this side of the tea will just continue on and be our cold water line to our sink and our shower. watching us plumb we're super excited to have this nether big step done in the build obviously there isn't water in our tank yet but there will be soon yeah i mean we're kind of at the bulk of the back end of the plumbing system it'll be filtered it'll move we just need to connect it to the sink and shower once we have the cabinets to run the plumbing lines through so pretty much good back here now we can build our bed again and start covering everything up and we should be pretty close to done with the back yeah the garage area of the bus the garage area is pretty much done yay see you soon see you next week bye love you, love you.